Hello everybody, my name is Richard Snyder, I'm a stained glass artist. We're down here at Old Town Mall again today on this cold January day. It's uh, the 5th and uh, 2014. We're about to get into the restoration of the lower half of the double hung window from Oak Hill Chapel. We're going to start the letting process. Come on in and join us. soldered together we will replace it with flat H lead cane which was original on the window when we uh, removed all the lead. Little vise here is set up you can clamp to the table for this job here. market in the last episode. zinc on the sides and the bottom uh, will be just temporary because we will replace it with the original lead flat H that was on there uh, beginning and this here is just going to hold it in place and keep it square. 
So I use these clips. I use these, so uh, well, let's go through the, the types of uh, accessories here and, and the uses. These are horseshoe nails. They're tapered. Uh, shaft there is tapered. And they work very well with these stop locks. This is a specialty item they sell in the stained glass industry for doing lead cane. This will fit over the piece of glass to hold it in place. You slip in your horseshoe nail into your wood and that holds everything together and in place uh, so you can let it together like the outside edge here so you have nice tight joints. The other edge actually fits into either the zinc or the lead came itself to hold that in place after you wrap the piece. So very useful product. I use them every day. So those two items are definitely a need for this. Uh, your solder here, there's uh, type, two types of solder. Well, actually more than that and because you can get it lead free as well. Uh, this here is just 6040, what I use all the time mainly. It's a uh, uh, low point of heating. 50-50 uh, I've used in the past. The problem with doing lead came using 50-50 is that it's a higher temperature and you have more uh, problems of burning through your lead when you're touching your iron to the lead uh, with a droplet of solder to make that seam. And a lot of times if you burn through it's hard to repair that. 6040 works a lot better, uh, it flows better, and uh, it's, it finishes off very nicely too if you were to patina it with uh, black patina for that antique look. I, use, uh, I made these little blocks for pushing and pulling uh, when I uh, apply the lead around some of the pieces. It's nice to have uh, a point that you can push down into the corner of the lead came to get a tight fit around the glass. Those are just scraps of glass that I, this is a piece of eighth inch wood that I use for glass you really can't pound against, you'll crack it or break it, the points. The wood is more solid for pounding and pressing into the lead came to press it for a better fit. Uh, this here is a tool that I developed years back. Uh, I've actually probably changed the way lead artists uh, do their lead work now because of the tools that were out there, actually are still out there and they sell them, are too hard to use physically and uh, the results you get are uh, poor. And it brings down the workmanship of your quality of work if you use it. This tool makes cutting angles for lead came uh, very easy. And uh, on my website, oneglassimpressions.com, we produced a video uh, of how to use this tool uh, for the most useful purpose of cutting angles in lead cane. That's what this tool is for. And basically the lead dikes are very useful. Another tool for lead cane is for cross cuts. And um, I'll show you here. I still use it for the, the cross cuts. It's a perfect tool to make that cut nice and uh, square and straight. For this tool here, there's no other tool that will do the job this tool does. It's called the Angle Lead Shear Number 5. And uh, it's got a lifetime warranty. It takes no tools to change the blade. It takes a regular utility knife blade. And uh, you'll pull the handles apart, pull out the blade. I tend to flip it around. I use the front of it quite often and get the full use of the blade by turning it around. And then you can use the front of the back side. And you just squeeze it together and lock it in place. Now if you were going to tie two pieces together where you got a, a sharp point here, this tool will not work for that. You can only do so much and the problem is, is that you'll bend the edging here of where you cut it. 
And the tool that they sell out there, uh, it's a half circle razor knife that you rock back and forth. Well, after time building a whole window, your wrist is so uh, much in pain you can barely move it. This tool here, you use it like a pair of pliers. If you were to, to put a line on there of an angle cut that you needed, say like this here, hold it upright. And to, to do a cut like that, no other tool out there will do that. You just line it up with your blade, hold it flat on the base, and with a quick grip, there is no tool that will cut an angle like that. It will improve the quality of your workmanship. And when you flex that with the next piece and drop solder on there, it will be a perfect seam. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, square this up here then. Get my nails ready, my clips. I know the bottom lines here are square from before. And you don't really have to worry about uh, this bottom edge here. It's right now the line that we're dealing with. So you put a clip over it. The top of the glass is to the top of the line here. I center it, put a nail in. This is a handy tool here for the glass work, a rubber side and hard plastic. And once you got that right on the line, the nail in the middle there, tap that in place, put a nail in the bottom, right below the nail, slide the glass over, do the same down here, I cut it a little longer because the sides will die into it, and like I say it's only temporary so we're going to pull that out after the window has been built and we'll replace this with the, the flat H lead. That was what was originally on there. But I don't want to use that now because it's soft and uh, you will dent it trying to use it now. And I want to keep that as uh, in perfect shape as, as the day they built this. So I'll put that on last. And it's uh, pretty much all rebuilt. And then one down here. I can bend that a little bit here to get it right on the line. And then put this here. Okay. And one in the middle. Number 48. careful with that too is that they're not upside down. It's got the texture on the back. That's the back side. First, the bottom and the in the sides. It takes a little bit to get it all set up, but once this is squared and pretty much temporary soldered in place or locked in place with the clips and the nails, then it's you're ready to go. Say the lead came comes in many different styles. This is round H, quarter inch wide. You can tell it's an H pattern. The glass actually fits in on both sides here. That's why it's difficult to repair if you have a broken piece in the middle. An edge isn't too prone. 
too much problem. You can take off the edging and pull it out. But if it happens to be in the center, there's no way to get that out. Uh, I've seen some repairs where they've peeled off the top edge all the way around, cut at different seams, and then pull it out that way. And then you have to glue the top edge back on, which is a very poor repair job. The, the biggest problem that I find uh, many times that you cannot repair it because you can't get the new solder to stick to the old oxidized lead that say is 75, 80 years old and it will burn through the lead trying to get it to stick and at that point you pretty much have to rebuild the whole thing. Start with new. Okay, we're going to, uh, this is the lead came the way it comes, right out of the box. It's usually bent up or twisted. And then you need to stretch it. It gives it uh, strength. You can stretch it about six feet uh, long is the way it comes, and you can stretch it maybe an additional six inches. And this here is a special lead vise that uh, you could clamp it, I suppose, uh, vice grip it if you didn't have one. They're fairly inexpensive, spring-loaded. You lift up the end, it's got a uh, kind of serrated uh, grip there, and press it down onto the end, about an inch or so, into the vise, and then I usually tap it so it grabs onto it. Because on this end, you're going to grab it with a pair of pliers. Just grab onto a pair of, a pair of ice grips or pliers and then just stretch. And that's pretty good. It straightens it out, it takes the kinks out of it, uh, any curves or anything, and it's not twisted, it's straight all the way along. And see it from there. Okay, we have our pieces cut here. One's going to go on the left. And one on the right. Before we can put them in place though, we need to cut our connections in between each piece here. The way that you cut with the lead dikes is that it will put kind of a tapered uh, end on the ends of the lead where you cut and you got to cut that off. So you just basically eye that straight Snip that off to become square again. You want a square as far as top to bottom and left to right. Because it's got to fit up to the zinc, which will be replaced to the lead, and also uh, into the lead seam, that first seam here. So what we're going to do take your lead dikes and you can test it out. You slip it in there. over it and see how it fits. So right there is the first connection and you need one, two, three, four on each side. So you'll need eight of those little pieces and that's how it fits in and divides the glass. And then from there you're, you could tack, solder that in place if you choose or just tack it using the nails and the clips. From there you work your way out. Number seven fits right here, and you you check it. See, uh, here's the top line we drew on the cartoon, and the left line. It's right in there. It's exactly where you want it to be. Now, if it was above it, on the top or beyond the left, you got a problem because as you build this from the left to the top. It's going to expand with every piece. The line is your lead. 
And if you can't see that line, that means it's buried under the glass, and when you add that piece of lead, it's going to expand on you. And you get over to the, the far left corner here, and you're going to have a problem because the, the glass piece is going to be too big. And you won't be able to fit it in. Number 19 is right there. That line is visible. All of them should be now, everything. Once you set up your, your each, each side and the bottom, and the lines are visible with these two pieces here, it's all going to flow together. Now to do this here, I mean, you can set each piece in if you'd like, at this point. Getting into the curvature of these pieces and forming your lead came around them, there is a certain technique of how to uh, wrap each piece. And you have to kind of view the way that the pieces fit together uh, to do it in uh, a long piece. You could wrap, you could start from the left here or the right. and. Uh, put an angle cut up against the, the lead here on the border and wrap it around to the center and then back up and around and then fit those pieces in there cut in your uh, separation pieces and do that all in one uh, application where you're going to fit four pieces together center and wrap it around as you go. So now we need to put a piece in there. You can eye, eye it pretty much on top of the angle. And you want to cut it oversized. And then this here is that critical angle cut. You just can't cut a square cut. You'll see that as soon as you put the lead solder on there. The solder only goes to where the lead is, and if it's a dead end, a square cut, that should be a, a sharp angle cut, you'll see that. So you need to put a line on there and cut it on the outside of your edge there. That's where the angle lead shear comes in.
together like it should. See here and there, here. And there we have it. So that's uh, the step here of letting the lower half of the stained glass window from Oak Hill Chapel and uh, the next step will be soldering.